Good morning. It's uh, 9 a.m. here in San Diego, so we will begin the webinar. Today's webinar is on how to identify ligand binding pockets and al allosteric sites in protein 3D molecules. My name is Andrew Ori, um, and I'm a senior scientist here at Molsoft. And if you have any questions after the webinar, please feel free to email or call. Uh, during the webinar, you can use the uh, question panel uh, to ask questions, and I'll try to answer them maybe as we go along or at the end. And also at the end, you can um, raise your hand, and I can open your mic if you have any questions at the end of the webinar. So you can, uh, after the webinar, you'll also get a recording of this if you want to uh, follow again afterwards. Uh, you can also follow Mosoft on Facebook and LinkedIn and uh, Twitter. I just wanted to show that uh, we have um, on our website, we have a, um, you can go to uh, YouTube and search for Mosoft and you can see we have um, a variety of other webinars here as well as how to on a number of different other subjects um, that you might want, might be interested in. So you just go to YouTube and search for Molsoft. So everybody, some people already have ICM licenses, but if you don't, um, we can send you one. Uh, uh, just, you just need to make sure you contact me um, or Molsoft using, the, using your institution or company email address, and we can get back to you uh, with the instructions. You should have the instructions on your GoToMeeting um, registration email as well on how to, to do that. So when you get the, the software, it includes what you what you were showing today, as well as other tools such as ligand docking, virtual screening, uh, homology modeling, uh, bioinformatics tools, which we covered uh, last week in the webinar, um, as well as um, what's shown here is the uh, 3D uh, ligand editor that we developed with Novartis, where you can make modifications to a ligand in a binding pocket and uh, see the effect of the change of the modification you make in 2D or 3D on ligand binding. That's called the ligand editor. So all these tools are um, in the ICM software that you, you, you'll get. But today we're concentrating on finding uh, ligand binding pockets. So the key topics today's webinar are um, how to set up a protein structure for pocket analysis, how to run ICM Pocket Finder and identify orthosteric and allosteric sites, how to determine if a pocket is potentially druggable. Uh, we'll also look at the, uh, what we call, was, uh, the scientists at Merck developed a, a score for a pocket to determine how drug-like that pocket is. We'll look at that. Uh, we use um, ICM Pocket Finder to look at the properties of pockets, such as how, how big they are, volume, area, how buried they are, and hydrophobicity. And we'll show how to change the representation of the pocket surfaces uh, in, in ICM. And also, at the end, we'll look at um, not typical drug-like pockets, but pockets that are um, maybe protein-protein interaction surfaces. So that, that these pockets are Aren't, aren't so buried or hydrophobic, they're more exposed. And we'll, we'll look at how to identify those at the end. So the prediction of ligand binding sites uh, can be used to investigate uh, the molecular recogni recognition mechanism and function of a protein. There are obviously other methods out there. Some, some of the methods use protein structure. Other use, others use evolutionary information using things like sequence alignments. And others use ligands, docking ligands, to identify the pocket or, um, or, or other, um, or the substrate uh, information. And, um, but ICM Pocket Finder uses only uh, protein structure. And the initial uh, uh, the initial paper describing this method was published uh, back in 2004. So today we're going to look at something like this. We're going to take the download the protein structure from the PDB, 
uh, we're going to use the tools in ICM Pocket Finder to go across the surface of the, of the structure and identify uh, cavities. Then once you've identified the cavities, um, we can, uh, then you need to be able to discriminate ones that are, sorry, just one second. Uh, you need to be able to discriminate ones that are uh, not drug-like or, or too small or too large, too exposed to be a drug-like pocket. And then hopefully finally we'll come down to find the uh, orthosteric site and also other potential uh, ligand binding sites. So the ICM method, um, first you need to uh, convert, you need to read in the ICM ob uh, a PDB from the PDB uh, website, and then you need to convert to an ICM object. Uh, we covered this in a, a webinar a couple of uh, days ago, and the, uh, the webinar, the, so basically this, this will add hydrogens, it will optimize certain side chains that aren't um, seen in, um, in in the, in the crystal structure, uh, so like asparagines and glutamines will be optimized, histidines, uh, charges will be added, and things like that. So then once you've converted to an ICM object, uh, we need to then, uh, we, we basically have a grid map potential map, similar to what we use for docking, uh, one, of the, one of the maps. Things, uh, so we, we take a, a map of the, of the structure that's created by basically right, right rolling a carbon atom probe of, of a certain um, angstrom size across the surface of the protein and mapping uh, that, uh, th those regions. And then those uh, regions are smooth and this then creates potential ligand envelopes and the, those are then contoured so you can view them and you can then uh, uh, sort and then remove pockets which are too, too small or too large. And so these values can be changed. So if you have a pocket that maybe is a little bit, um, you, can, you can play around with these parameters, uh, but they're pretty well trained for uh, drug-like um, molecules. So we're going to work on an example. This example is um, uh, the muscarinic acetylcholine uh, receptor. It's, it's a G protein coupled receptor, and it has uh, seven uh, transmembrane helices. And this structure we're going to look at is interesting because it has uh, uh, not only a, an orthosteric ligand bound, it also has an allosteric ligand bound. The orthosteric, it has the orthosteric agonist here, and a positive allosteric modulator shown in blue here. Uh, the first PDB code we're going to read is 4MQT, and the structure reveals that, uh, that the allosteric uh, ligand recognizes a largely preformed uh, binding site in the extracellular region of the receptor, inducing a slight uh, contraction of this outer binding pocket. And these structures are interesting because they offer important insights into the activation mechanism and allosteric modulation of muscarinic receptors. So we're going to read in, we're going to open ICM, and we're going to read in this first uh, PDB file. So if you have ICM loaded, you should have a, an icon here uh, that you can just uh, click on. And then you should see a screen similar to this. There's a number of different menus. Depending on the product you have, you may have different menus here. So the first uh, PDB uh, we're going to read in. We go to the Search tab, and we choose the, you can see um, there are other databases you can search and download data from, including like Kemble and other things. Uh, but today we're just going to be using the PDB. So we go to PDB search, and we can type in the PDB code, it's 4MQT. This downloads the structure, and we just orientate it into a particular view. Uh, so we can see that uh, this, this structure, this protein structure, has a, a, a resolution of 3.7 angstroms. Uh, it has one uh, protein, uh, two protein chains actually, the, the uh, transmembrane region shown in blue here. It also has this uh, G protein 
mimet mimetic uh, molecule in the, in the intracellular region, uh, which stabilizes the uh, muscarinic uh, receptor uh, for crystallization purposes, I think. And in it also inside it, we have the, uh, the agonist uh, ligand and the, um, uh, uh, the allosteric uh, modulator here. So, in this example, we do have the ligands bound, but um, if you have an example where the ligands aren't bound, then it's exactly the same process because we don't use the ligand information, we just purely use the, the crystal structure. So, the first step, as I mentioned, we need to convert this structure to an ICM object. So, to do that, uh, we, we can see it's an X-ray, SXR, which stands for X-ray. So, to convert to an ICM object, we right-click and we choose uh, Convert PDB. Now, there are a number of different options here, uh, which I, we did actually cover in the previous webinar, which you can look up, uh, but I'll go over them very quickly. Um, you can delete waters, uh, you can keep tight waters, which are waters that make three or four hydrogen bonds with the ligand or receptor, or you can just choose keep all. I'm just going to, for speed, well, actually, I don't think there's any waters in this molecule, but um, we can delete waters. And then, if you're doing this properly, you would need to optimize hydrogens. That will optimize the hydrogen bonding network in the protein structure. And also optimize asparagines and glutamines and histidines, as I mentioned. In this example, just for clarity, I'm going to overwrite the X-ray structure. So I'm going to replace the X-ray structure with the ICM object. But if you want to compare, compare uh, what ICM has done when it's converted with the X-ray, you can just uncheck this and you'll have two objects here. Uh, the other options are just, you can just leave them for this case. So just go OK and this converts. You can see um, in, the IC, in the terminal window here that it's optimizing, uh, it, it outputs the information about what it's doing. So it's, it's optimizing the histidine, uh, an asparagine residue is flipped, a glutamine residue is flipped to optimize the hydrogen bonding network. So now it's converted. Um, maybe you can't see in the go to meeting but hopefully um, if you're using software at home, you can see that it says ICM here, which means that uh, it's converted to an ICM object. So now we can, if we want to do docking or modeling or um, identify binding pockets, which is the purpose of today's webinar, uh, we're ready to go. So to identify uh, ligand binding pockets, we, um, it's going to close this terminal window. You just need to select what you want to um, analyze. So if you just wanted to look at the, t the transmembrane region, you can just click there. Or if you wanted to look at the, the pockets in the intracellular region, you could just select here. But I'm just going to select all, like this. You can see the selection is green crosses in the uh, ICM works in the 3D graphics and blue selections in the, in the ICM workspace. So then we go to Tools, and we choose um, 3D Predict. And then we choose ICM Pocket Finder. So then it asks us some questions in this dialog window. Uh, the input selection um, is telling us that we have uh, four molecules selected, which is correct. We have the A chain, the B chain, and the two chemicals. So it's going to consider all these things. Um, the tolerance, we'll cover that later on. Um, this is kind of the, this, you know, this, this will... Uh, this is trained for drug-like molecules, this value, but um, dr drug-like pockets, uh, this value. Uh, but if you want to find more exposed protein-protein interaction sites, as we'll do later on, you need to maybe lower this tolerance. Um, and then there's some questions asking us, do you want to create sequence sites? Yeah, you can do that if you want to. Um, display the results. That's okay. Um, and by default, uh, the pocket finder will actually re ignore any het atoms or ligands that you have bound in your structure. Uh, but if you have um, if you have some and you want to not find pockets there because you're not interested in the region of that ligand or whatever, you can keep the compounds in the analysis. But um, by default, it will ignore. It will just look at the protein structure basically. So uh, we just go OK, and hopefully it will run pretty quickly. Yeah. So uh, we can see uh, now in the ICM workspace we have some extra information. We have a new uh, table which has a lot of the uh, statistics and properties of each pocket 
and a plot, which we'll, we'll look at in a bit. Uh, we also have the maps. It's used for the, for the uh, generation of the pockets using the, the carbon probe. And more importantly is that you can see in the ICM workspace here, we have additional uh, objects. So we have this one. So this is the blue one that's displayed, which is between the G protein mimetic and the uh, intracellular region of the GPCR. And then you can toggle the other pockets on and off. So if you run this on a larger protein, you may have many pockets. And we'll discuss in a bit how to um, discriminate which ones, you know, which ones might be worth targeting and which ones might not be. But to start with, I'm just going to uh, look at some of the visualization things that you can do. So we found, you can see here we have the, the orthosteric site in red and the allosteric site in uh, yellow. You can see that the colors here match the, the structure. So if you toggle here, that will undisplay that pocket, the, uh, the orthosteric pocket, and likewise with the allosteric pocket. So you can toggle the pockets on and off here. Um, you can change the representation of the pockets by uh, right-clicking on the little um, square here, and you've got some options. So you've got like red uh, dots, you can display as dots, you can display as wire, uh, you can display uh, solid rugged, so, <laughs> with a different representation, and you can say solid smooth, that will make it a little bit smoother. Uh, or you can say, uh, which is quite useful, smooth transparent. And then you can see, if you have a ligand in the pocket, then you can you can see uh, the pocket a little bit better. Uh, if you want to play around with the lighting, so here the, the transparency is not wonderful. It's kind of obstructing the view of the ligand a little bit. So if you go to the light tab here, you can, trans you can play around with the level of transparency. So if you drag on the transparency bar here on the top, you can make it uh, you know, almost fully transparent all the way through to opaque again. Um, you can also change the brightness of the trans transparency by clicking and dragging here, straight in here. So other tools are the shine. Um, it all depends on what you like. If you don't, if you want to go back to the um, original settings, you just need to reset the value. Yeah. So, uh, I'm just going to leave it like that to start with. We may not be happy with the color of this, um, the orthosteric pocket, and it's not very nice. So, uh, we can change the color of that orthosteric pocket by right-clicking on a pocket and go to color, and you can choose the, um, oh, there's different options. You can choose uniform, and I'm just going to change it to uh, blue. Let's see if that or magenta. So now magenta, magenta, you can see which one's which. And you change that to a wire representation around the, the pocket. Okay, sometimes it's useful also to be able to change um, the coloring of the pocket based on which residues are interacting with the pocket. Um, so you can do that by, I was gonna display it as solid smooth, and then you can right click on the pocket and choose uh, color by side chain type. And there's some different, uh, you can play around with the size of the brush and um, where it gets the, if, if it's backbone interaction, you can say color it white and there's other, there's, there's other options here, but you just go okay. And that will change the coloring. Uh, eventually you'll see, you see it. Yep. So, the, so now this is colored according to the residue contacts uh, and the color the color chart is 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 here. But just for clarity, I'm going to put it back to um, uniform magenta again. Okay, so we have our allosteric pocket and we have our orthosteric pocket. So um, sometimes uh, by default it tends to display the residues that make uh, contact with the with the pocket a stick. You can see that the closest ones 
are all a stick. That's going to undisplay that, and you can go back to our table, which we'll discuss in a bit of the values here. Um, but um, so pocket number two, I think, is our allosteric pocket. So if you just double click on the on here, um, you'll see that uh, the they have green crosses. So this is the these are the residues that are making contact with the pocket. And you can also see uh, in the ICM workspace the residues that are making contact. If you had an alignment, as we showed last week in the bioinformatics webinar, um, these would be projected to the alignment as well. And you can see the conservation around the pocket as well. Um, but you can see we've got green crosses. So that means um, anything we do here is propagated to the graphics display. So we can just display um, the uh, side chains. Uh, sometimes it's useful to click on the R button here, uh, which um, propagates your selection to every single atom in the residue. So you can see, hopefully, that that selection got a little bit larger, because we, when you do a spherical selection, you, you, you may not get every single atom of the residue side chain. So if you click there, that will propagate that selection. We, we covered this um, in the first webinar, I think. Um, it's going to color carbon only uh, black. Just for... And now we can see the, the side chains surrounding the allosteric site here. Okay. And also, um, in the ICM workspace, in the terminal window, in the, sorry, in the workspace window, we have sites here. These sites, most of these sites are um, are taken from Uniprot. Um, so if there's missing residue or uh, some other annotation for Uniprot, they're listed here. But you can also see that the the site is um, is is also listed in this uh, in this part of the ICM workspace. So you can always go back here. If you double click, that makes a selection. That makes a selection here. So it's all it's all stored. Uh, for you. Um, so these are sites. Uh, we had a question about the, the displaying the pocket as I had a question about um, how to display the pocket by uh, um, electrostatics. Uh, well one of the ways we can do that we actually um, if we display the ligand here uh, this is kind of moving away from what we are doing but because uh, we're just we're just trying to find uh, binding sites, not necessarily with a ligand in. But if you wanted to display the pocket um, by uh, um, well, actually by binding properties, uh, you can just right right click on the ligand and choose uh, pocket receptor pocket and go OK. And because I've got the lighting, um, let me change the lighting a little. Uh, go back to the default. So now hopefully you can see that the pocket is has this surface. It's a bit larger because it extends beyond the pocket, the immediate pocket. Uh, but you can see that the pocket is colored by uh, binding pocket uh, binding properties. Um, let me just change the color of the background a bit. Um, so you, that adds another uh, element to our ICM workspace. So you can just say you can say solid smooth. And that colors the, the pocket smooth as well. So it's kind of moving away from what we're doing. We're trying to find pockets to dock to or to, 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 to identify. Uh, I'm just using this example with the ligands just to show that it found the two uh, correct, correctly. Yeah, and another way uh, would be to uh, um, also build a surface, so you could you can make a surface, uh, select what you want to build and make a surface from, go to meshes, and then choose plain solid, and click on here. And then uh, you can see the, the cavities, uh, if you go to view and then choose um, sketch accent, sometimes that helps to define the, the cavity, and then we can see our ligand bound in that cavity. As well. So that's another way of viewing the pockets as well. Uh, but at the moment we're just working on an ICM pocket finder. So I had a question, does the criteria, criteria of the pocket also depend on the quality of the electron density map? Uh, 
Yes, but in kind of indirectly, the, the quality of the pocket is going to be dependent on the quality of the, the crystal structure. Um, so, um, I mean, if you have low occupancy and you have missing loops, for example, uh, or, you know, certain regions that are missing, you may need to have some, you know, it's not going to find that pocket unless you build the loop, that if the pocket is in that region uh, for, for low occupancy. Um, for high B factors, obviously, you've got maybe some kind of flexibility in the pocket, so you may need to address that as well. Um, yeah, so it, the quality of the prediction of the binding pocket depends on how good the crystal structure is in that, in that respect, yeah. Okay, I had a question about um, identifying smaller cavities. Um, we'll, we'll cover that in a little bit, um, or larger cavities. So um, we can also, uh, we can color this surface um, while it's there, I'll just show you. Uh, so the pocket is this one. I'm just going to remove the sketch accent so you can see the pocket. So you can see the pocket. Um, we can make a selection around the pocket, and then we can color the surface also by the, um, by the pocket interaction. So you can right click and choose color by atom selection. Once again, you get a brush size, which you can play around with. Um, I'm just going to color it uh, green. Let's go OK. So now you can see that the, the surface is colored. If we remove the pocket, the surface is colored by the, um, the interaction. So that's not just another way of, um, of representing the pocket. OK, so I'm going to move on. Um, so now you can see at the bottom here, we have the statistics, um, this is the colouring, I'm just going to delete that table, it's not important. So we have the pockets here. So we have a column for volume, area, hydrophobicity, buriedness, how aromatic the uh, pocket is. Uh, this D-lid score, which we'll, we'll talk about all these in a minute, um, this is the one I, Merck, scientists at Merck use ICM to develop this drug lightness density score, which I'll show you. Um, we have radius and how spherical the pocket is. Uh, we also have plot. This is plot's useful if you've got, you know, maybe more than. Uh, sometimes you get more pockets. But in this example, we only have five. Uh, but we tried to um, sort of shade a region where uh, these pockets uh, are falling into sort of a more drug-like uh, in terms of volume and area. It's just a guide. Okay. So these these values we'll talk about now. So, uh, the pocket properties. So, uh, volume obviously is um, in angstroms cubed, uh, and uh, area is in angstroms squared. Uh, you, the hydrophobicity represents the percentage of the pocket surface in contact with um, hydrophobic protein residues, and uh, that, that value can range from zero to one. Uh, the buriedness parameter is calculated as um, it measures the solvent accessibility surface area of the pocket with a particular probe radius and then measures the surface um, solvent accessible surface area of the pocket covered by um, its shell. So the ratio of the two uh, indicates how um, buried it is. So the lowest possible value is 0.5 and the highest is, is 1. So if it's 1 then that pocket is, is completely buried. We have the drug-like density score, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Next slide. Um, and the radius and um, this, this, these two uh, values um, give an indication of how um, spherical your pocket is. So if this value is low, then you've probably got a very flat, um, elongated pocket. Um, if that value is, 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 uh, is, is 1, then the cavity is uh, completely uh, spherical. Um, and last week we covered um, alignments, uh, so you can also see the, if you have an alignment made, you can also see the percentage of conservation around your pocket um, based on the alignment. We covered that last week in the webinar. So the Merck uh, DLID score is shown here. DLID stands for uh, drug-like density, and it's a method for quantifying 
uh, bindability of a protein target. Uh, using ICM, uh, they characterized approximately 290,000 pockets from over 42,000 crystal structures in the PDB. And they were looking at um, three main parameters, uh, the pocket space, I, you know, volume, how buried the pocket is, and how hydrophobic it is. And the, the DLID me measures how likely a pocket is to bind a drug-like molecule. And they were able to see a, a global trend in order to score, to, to, to build this score. Um, they, using uh, linear regression, they were looked at, uh, they saw um, uh, sort of the correlation between uh, the log of the volume, buriedness, and hydrophobicity. And this produced the score. So we, we have that in ICM. Uh, 0.5 is considered, uh, uh, greater than 0.5 is considered druggable. Uh, but we've got to be a bit careful what we say, druggable. We can say, so in the paper they describe that they're talking about bindability. So bindability is not totally predictive of a target being successfully addressed in a drug discovery program. So basically, it, it's, you need, it's just a guide. So a low DLID implies only that the active site may be very small. So if you've got a negative number, the, the, the pocket may be small or shallow or very polar. But a good DLID score uh, indicates that um, it may have the properties that you could use to develop, uh, to design a drug in that in that pocket and, and bind a drug. Um, so this is just taking the paper, just to you know, caveat, just to, uh, it's uh, obviously the, the, drug, the whole drug discovery process beyond the pocket is, is a different story. Uh, but this will find you a pocket that uh, is uh, drug-like and you can maybe design a ligand to that pocket. Okay, so we can see in the table here, in, if we go back to ICM, uh, I'm just going to undisplay this and display the, the pockets uh, of interest. So we can see if we sort the table by uh, DLID score, um, the lower the score, so if we double click, this has got the worst DLID score. So if we double click on here, it takes us to this very small, if you see eventually, yeah, this small uh, pocket here. Um, if we sort by DLID, you can sort just by clicking on the column like this. If we go to, if we double click now, it will take us to that pocket. And you can see the one with the highest DLID score is the orthosteric site here. And the one with the second highest score, uh, just a little, little bit above 0.5, which is the cutoff, is this allosteric site here. I imagine the score was affected probably by the, um, it's quite exposed, this uh, pocket, so it's got a little bit, compared to the orthosteric site, um, so the score is probably uh, changed by that value. So I just want to show that we can compare sites. So in this paper, I didn't mention the paper, but it, it was cited in the slide. Uh, they also solved another uh, structure, um, which is 4MQS. This is, I think this is the, this, these structures are from the Kabilka lab. Um, and so uh, you can, so now we have this other structure, 4MQS, which is, um, which doesn't, which has an orthosteric ligand, but not an allosteric site. But, so we can compare the difference between the allosteric site with the ligand allosteric bound and and not. So to do that, um, we first need to make sure that the structures are optimally superimposed. Um, there's different ways you could do this. You could just select around the binding pocket like this, or um, you need to be careful how you superimpose because we're comparing. But then um, if you just, for, this, for the sake of this example, we're just going to um, select the A chains of both Go to display tab, and then there's a superimpose button here, and it just goes superimpose, and that superimposes the structures you can see here. So, um, so on display this, this, this thing. So the yellow one is the uh, one without the allosteric inhibitor, um, allosteric modulator. So um, we can. So to find the, how the pocket looks without the allosteric modulator in it, we convert to an ICM object as we did before. Okay. 
and in the same way uh, we will see it's running with pocket finder takes a little bit of time a little bit slower when I'm projecting on go to meeting <laughs> uh, should be yeah done now okay um, So I'm just gonna sorry, I'm just gonna try it again. Yeah, for some reason I'm doing my best. Um, so now we can see that we have two pockets in the MQS um, in the in the the non allosterically mod modulated structure. Um, I'm just gonna undisplay the things that are not interesting. So we can compare. We can compare these two sites. You can you can visually see them. But they check they're different. Uh, you can, for example, change the wire, and you can display the differences between the two. So the without the ligand, uh, without the allosteric modulator, it sort of contracts. Um, so blue is the without, and red is the um, allosteric modulator pocket. So you can see the differences in the pocket. Uh, in the table here, you'd also get differences in the in the values, the, the size, and the volume, and everything like that. Okay. Um, so before we move on to other, to to less drug-like pockets, um, I just wanted to show you, you can also uh, identify things like um, this is a, a voltage channel, potassium voltage channel. So you can also display um, like pores and more elongated. Um, regions uh, in, in molecules as well so um, you can you, it's not only for, for, for drugs uh, you, you can visualize uh, cavities and things like that okay. so for the last topic I uh, just want to move on to sort of protein protein interaction surfaces so um, obviously these are challenging for, for drug discovery uh, but they have been successfully targeted so it's worth discussing. So uh, proteins do not have open hydrophobic surfaces. Therefore, um, we it's, it's hard to identify um, you know sort of drug-like pockets on the surface. So MOSOF has a way of in ICM we have a way of identifying protein-protein um, interaction sites. And then if you can combine that with ICM Pocket Finder, you can outline the protein-protein uh, interaction pocket. Ah, I had a quick question actually. Just um, one. What was the? Yeah, I was going to show that. Uh, what was the score? I had a question. What was the score for the um, the nun um, for this pocket here? <laughs> uh, the DLID score is minus point oh two. So it, it identifies it correctly identifies that it's not um, in the current com confirmation. It's not uh, druggable. So you need to open that pocket up in order to fit the. Um, Alistair, sorry, that goes um, beyond. Um, we're moving on to this uh, idea. So, the, so protein protein interaction patches can be have lower desolvation energy and lower entropy. So we, we have a method that uses this um, to identify protein protein interaction sites. So the method is called optimal docking area. So optimal docking area predicts protein protein interaction patches, like contiguous patches on the surface. Um, and it's uh, derived from adjusting some, uh, from looking at the uh, desolvation energy, uh, the docking desolvation energy, and it was it was published back in 2005, and um, it, it, uh, it performed pretty well, identifying in the protein data bank from 66 different complexes, um, it correct, correctly locates 80% uh, of the interfaces. So it gives you a guide if you are looking for a protein protein interaction pocket. It will give you a guide of where possibly that pocket may be, but also obviously you may have other um, information such as uh, biological mutational data or other other data. This 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 in combination with experimental data is, is is useful. If you don't have any experimental data, then it's going to find you some patches on the surface that you could target. So if we open ICM, 
and we read in an example to st1 also oh, to st yeah okay and we convert this to an ICM object so we right click here say convert again replace the original go OK so here we have we have an example of um, uh, a satellite and uh, chymotrypsin and the this is the the receptor molecule so we can run now it's an ICM object we can we can run that ODA analysis this is going to find us patches contiguous patches on the surface where there may be protein protein interaction site so if you go to tools and then go to 3d predict protein interface by ODA it's different options selection is going to work on the a chain it's one molecule selected whatever you select um, this is just a representation option that you can play around with go okay you can see it's calculating the salvation map and that's calculating the points and it's projecting these points onto the um, surface so we have a table which tabulates the uh, the ODA score um, but one way of visualizing it is you get these these ta these uh, representations here and um, you can see we have a couple of points there's a place here where there could be an interaction protein protein interaction site and also uh, the red means that the prediction is good so uh, another region here so we can have a look at the pocket finder go to tools 3d predict ICM pocket finder and now because uh, we are trying to identify sort of exposed protein protein interaction sites um, the uh, we, we need to lower the tolerance a little bit um, so um, this is so to, like, to lower it by by one point is usually enough for for protein protein interaction. So if you lower it too much, you're going to get lots and lots and lots of smaller uh, cavities. Um, which uh, so we just go okay. Let's see. And so now once again we get a table. Uh, the D lid scores we would expect is pretty very poor because these aren't classically drug-like pockets, these are exposed protein-protein interaction sites. Uh, but if you are adventurous and you want to target these, we can see that we have four different sites on the surface. So now let's just compare it with the um, with the crystal structure of the complex and see if it finds anything of interest. So the complex uh, which has um, chymotrypsin and, and uh, sotolysin together is 2SNI. Uh, we need to superimpose those again, so um, so we have uh, let's make this green, darker green. Okay, so we have the two structures. Uh, this one is the the one we predicted on. So we're going to superimpose the two structures. We select them. We go to display. If you want to have more superimpose options, you go to superimpose. But this button does a reasonable job at superposition for this example. And then we can see that, um, <clears throat> so this is the ligand here in red on the right hand side and um, we can see that this pocket here has been found where that loop of the ligand of the protein uh, peptide binds in that region. So uh, you can visualize that pocket, uh, you could um, color by electrostatic surface or, or whatever you can see the interaction between the protein so that there, there is a, a, sh a shallow but elongated cavity in that region um, if you wanted to explore small molecules that, that bind that okay so uh, we had quite a few questions but um, some of them